Good afternoon. Uh, let me start by thanking uh, State Attorney Kim Fox and her exceptional staff for their dedication and professionalism that they have exhibited while working with me and my clients uh, over the last few weeks. The City of Chicago and Cook County are very fortunate to have Kim Fox and her professional staff at the helm of this criminal prosecution, and I am highly confident, extremely confident, that at the end of this journey, R. Kelly will be convicted on multiple counts. Ms. Fox, from the very first moment that I approached her in connection with the information that we had uncovered, has been nothing but dedicated and professional. She gave me her personal assurance the first time that I met her in person earlier this month that she was going to see to it that a fair and thorough investigation was conducted by her office, that they were going to be diligent and beyond thorough as it related to getting to the bottom of this evidence and potentially bringing criminal charges against R. Kelly. This has not been a rush to judgment by any stretch of the imagination. They have been uh, very thorough, as I said earlier, dedicated and methodical in their investigation. I presently represent six clients, two victims, two parents, as well as two whistleblowers who can both be described as knowing R. Kelly and being within his inner circle for the better part of 25 years. My office was originally retained in April of last year by a concerned parent. We began a thorough investigation. We traveled the United States. We interviewed witnesses. We uncovered documents. And we did so very, very quietly so as to ensure that no complaints could later be made that we were pursuing this for any other reason other than justice. Again, we began in April of last year. Earlier this month, we uncovered and recovered a videotape of over 40 minutes in length. We promptly brought it to the attention of Ms. Fox and others in her office. This tape leaves no question as to whether R. Kelly is guilty of multiple sexual illegal acts against a 14-year-old girl. The tape was shot in uh, the late 90s, approximately 1999. It depicts two separate scenes shot on two separate days within Mr. Kelly's residence at the time. The audio on the tape is clearly, uh, you can clearly listen to it. It is clear the video is far superior than the video that was used in connection with the 2008 trial. It is an entirely different video. Repeatedly on the video, both the victim and Mr. Kelly refer to the victim's age as being 14. That occurs in excess of 10 separate times on the video. Both the victim and Mr. Kelly can be heard referencing her age. It is also clear from other things that are depicted on the video that this was in no way role playing during some sexual act. It is clear that this young lady was 14 years of age during the time the video was shot. Mr. Kelly throughout the video stops what he's doing, stops his acts of sexual assault, and he pr proceeds to move the video camera and adjust the camera angle, zooming in, changing the direction of the shot, and things of that nature. So there's no question that he knew exactly what he was doing. At one time, or at, at one point in time on the video, in the first scene, it is clear that Mr. Kelly is having the victim watch another piece of pornography which appears to be him with yet another young girl on a big screen television 
in the background. Repeatedly on the video, the young lady refers to Mr. Kelly as uh, daddy. The video depicts Mr. Kelly engaged in oral sex with the young victim, both receiving as well as giving, as well as vaginal intercourse and anal penetration. There are also instances of Mr. Kelly urinating on the young girl on the videotape. This video was turned over again to Ms. Fox and others in our office earlier this month within days of our recovery of the tape. We have since provided additional information and evidence to Ms. Fox and others in her office. We envision continuing to do so because our investigation is not complete. We are aware of two other tapes in existence, one of which we have recovered the second of which we are in the process of recovering, and as soon as we do, we will be providing those tapes as well to Ms. Fox and others in her office. Today marks a watershed moment in the 25 years of abuse by this predator known as R. Kelly. He, together with those that enabled him, undertook a course of action over two decades to abuse and sexually assault young girls, especially many of whom were the most vulnerable in our society. Girls that many would not listen to. Girls that came from very tough times and tough neighborhoods in many instances. These were the most vulnerable. And yet this predator, Mr. Kelly, preyed on them repeatedly. I want to send a message to the enablers of Mr. Kelly, to the agents and the managers and the attorneys and the others who stood idly by and looked the other way and turned a blind eye while teenage girls were sexually assaulted for over two decades. I will not rest until each of you is brought to justice. We will uncover evidence relating to your participation in these crimes. Mr. Kelly did not do this alone. He did so with the assistance of all of these folks. And it was all, let's be clear, in the interest of money. These people, these agents, these attorneys, and these managers, they looked the other way while these young girls were taken advantage of instead of doing the right thing because they didn't want to kill the golden goose. They didn't want to interfere with their own individual paydays. And as far as I'm concerned, they are just as guilty as the predator R. Kelly. It is disgusting. And every parent in America should be disgusted not only by the conduct of Mr. Kelly, but by those that turned a blind eye, that looked the other way while this occurred for over two decades. As a father of two teenage girls, 14 and 16, I am especially outraged and disgusted by this conduct and the amount of time that it has taken to bring this predator to justice. I stand here before you as a father and as a man that believes in the rule of law and that of justice with a sense of satisfaction, temporary satisfaction today as a result of these very serious charges. But our job is not done. We are going to continue to represent our clients. We are going to continue to do what we've done for over 10 months, all in the pursuit of justice and what is right. I am highly confident that Mr. Kelly will be convicted. I am confident that he will be convicted in other jurisdictions as well and he will rightfully die in a prison somewhere, whether it be in Illinois or elsewhere in America. He should never walk free another day in his life as a result of the over two decades of abuse that he dished out and participated in time and time again. I'll now take questions. Mr. Abinati, can you explain 
uh, just two things. Number one, do you represent the young lady that is depicted on the videotape because Gloria Allred has indicated that she is representing that person? But number two, how many of these other ancillary figures do you believe have enough culpability that they should be charged? Here's what I'll say. I know for a fact that Ms. Allred does not represent the victim depicted on the tape that we provided. There's no question she does not represent that victim. I don't know why she would claim that or suggest it. I've never received a call from Ms. Allred in connection with this case. She never inquired as to whether it was her client that came out of left field, so I have no idea where that um, came from. Um, I, am not, I, am not, I am not prepared to state whether we are representing that particular victim on that videotape or not at this point. Um, and there's a reason for that that I think will become clear in the coming days as it relates to these enablers. I think that ultimately that, na that number will be uh, in excess of 10 individuals over the over two decades that assisted Mr. Kelly in his sexual assaults, transporting minors, uh, and covering this entire process up. Are you representing, are you representing Are the incidents any of the videotape directly connected to the charges yes. that were brought down today? I, 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 am, I, 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 am, I am representing at least one individual identified in the grand jury indictment, and I am not going to identify that individual because obviously they were a minor at the time. In this jurisdiction or another jurisdiction? I'm sorry? Are all your clients in this jurisdiction or another jurisdiction? Multiple jurisdictions around the country. Yes, sir. Can you explain to us, uh, you talk about obstruction of justice. Can you give us some sense of what that is and what you have uncovered? In connection with the 2008 trial, there is no question that Mr. Kelly and many of those around him engaged in obstruction of justice through threats and intimidation of witnesses secreting certain witnesses outside the jurisdiction, outside the reach of prosecutors here in Chicago, engaging in the payment to various witnesses in order to shape their testimony, as well as the payment of monies designed to procure uh, evidence so that it could subsequently be destroyed and kept out of the hands of prosecutors here in Chicago. This trial was rigged in 2008. Make no mistake about it. And that is how they were able to procure the acquittal of Mr. Kelly in 2008. And I am highly confident that this time around, the result will not be the same. Are the two principals so, that you, I know you don't want to identify the victim you're representing in the grand jury. They were identified by initials. Can you at least tell us which of those initials so we know which case you were Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that at this time because I don't think it's appropriate. But I think at an appropriate time, I will. Are, are the two grand jury that the you're again? representing? Um, you referred also to enablers. Are there people that you would consider to have been former enablers? And can you talk about what knowledge directly they have of this uh, these payments or anything that we're I'm doing. not at liberty to answer that question now because I don't want to out the confidentiality of the individuals that I represent um, who have now provided information to prosecutors. I don't want to put a target on their back um, during this very sensitive time. So I'm not willing to discuss uh, in detail what their role was vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Kelly, but they were close enough to him that they had knowledge of a lot of his conduct and a lot of his activities over the better part of two decades. Uh, including in connection with the 2008 trial and the obstruction efforts that I mentioned moments ago. Sir, you had a question. Yeah, do you, are you aware if the grand jury saw the video or was it indicated to you by prosecutors at least that they intended to use that as, as a means to try to obtain the indictment? Uh, I have certain knowledge as it relates to the grand jury, but I'm not going to discuss what that knowledge is or what the grand jury saw or did not see because those proceedings are secret. Uh, by design, by law here in Illinois, and it would not be appropriate for me to comment on what the grand jury had at their disposal in connection with their charging decision. Are the incidents depicted on the videotape linked to any of the charges in the indictment? Yes. Michael. The, the trial is rigged is quite a statement. Are you casting aspersions against Judge Vincent Gaughan or the prosecutors, the state's attorney at that time? Who? No, I'm not, I'm, not cast, I'm, not, I'm not casting aspersions as it relates to the sitting judge or prosecutors in that case, most certainly not the prosecutors or the sitting judge, uh, or even Mr. Kelly's defense counsel that handled the trial directly in that case. What I am saying unequivocally is that Mr. Kelly and many around him engaged in each of the acts that I identified earlier as it relates to rigging that trial and the outcome. 
When well, you we, undertake... Uh, we, we wrote a story in, in July 2008. Well, you've, uh, wrote, you've written a lot of great stories. I've written a lot of right? stories. Uh, July 2008, Gone unseals one of the 153 sealed transcripts. Lisa Van Allen was threatened by the then manager of Kelly with being murked. Is that what you're talking about? Well, that's that's one act, but that was a... Are you representing Van Allen? Uh, no, I'm not presently representing Van Allen, but what I'm telling you is that was not a single incident of that type of conduct. There was all kinds of... Aware. There were all kinds of shenanigans that yeah. went on, obstruction of justice acts in connection with the 2008 trial. That would be one of many. New York is frustrated, New York is frustrated that Kim's Fox's office is not cooperating. New York. Three federal agencies in New York, two jurisdictions, Eastern, Southern, a sitting grand jury, and they're not getting cooperation from Chicago. Chicago screwed this up the first time. Why shouldn't it be federal? Well, I'm, I'm highly confident um, that, well, first of all, I think the fix was in the first time, so I don't think prosecutors got a fair swing at the pitch, if you will, number one. And number two, I'm highly confident that nothing's going to be screwed up this time, and if I had any doubts about that, then I would not have turned the evidence over to Ms. Fox and her staff. I would have turned it over to others. But I feel highly confident in Ms. Fox's ability. There's little question in my mind that her and her office are going to be able to gain a conviction. As it relates to the cooperation level, from what I've witnessed, there has been cooperation with Ms. Fox, although I haven't been privy to uh, many of those communications. But it's not unusual for um, state prosecutors and federal prosecutors to sometimes butt heads as it relates to who's going to take the lead in connection um, with a uh, investigation. So I'm confident that any uh, federal prosecutor that deems it necessary, they too will have their chance to charge Mr. Kelly. And it's one of the reasons why I don't believe that he'll ever walk free, because I think he will be brought up on other charges in the future, whether they be related to the Mann Act or other conduct that Mr. Kelly and his enablers engaged in. Mr. Michael, would you explain what these enablers are? Whether or not this tape, did this videotape that you handed over to the state's attorney, was that part of your accusations about obstruction of justice? this tape kept from prosecutors back during 2008? Mr. Kelly and others close to him took specific steps and acts to keep this tape out of the hands of prosecutors in connection with the 2008 trial because they realized how critically important it was to Mr. Kelly's ability to gain an a, a acquittal in connection um, with that case. Um, so the answer would be yes, sir. You speak of the enablers, we, we, and, and you, you made it sound like they were instrumental in procuring these young women. Would you, would you explain what you mean by that and exactly what did they enable? Well, here's what I'll say. You don't carry out over two decades of sexual abuse targeting girls under the age of 18 and travel with them around the country and put them up, whether it be in your residence or hotel rooms or elsewhere, provide for them in certain circumstances, keep them from speaking with other people and the like without help. So there's no question that people very close to R. Kelly participated in this conduct and enabled it all in the interest of money because they did not want to interfere with their payday and they recognized that if he was charged and convicted their payday would end and that is the pr predominant reason why they engaged in this conduct and I think ultimately many of them are going to be forced to account for their role in all of this over the last 25 years. Can you describe what was in the other two videos and if the victims in today's indictment are pictured in those videos? Yeah I'm not I'm not prepared to describe what uh, is depicted in the other or shown in the other uh, two videos at this time. But can you say if today's victims in the indictment are in those videos? Uh, one of them is. Because there is a video here that we're talking about, um, what other charges do you think that R. Kelly could be facing as your investigation continues? Today there's the 10 counts of sexual abuse. Um, could he, down the road, could they be adding more charges? Uh, I think they may certainly add additional charges. You could say yes, a superseding indictment uh, or something similar to that. I think, frankly, the charging decision today was very well thought out and was conservative, uh, and it was very smartly done by, uh, by Kim Fox. I think this is the tip of the iceberg. I think you're likely to see additional state charges as well as federal charges. Uh, and I think that may even be more true once 
uh, Mr. Kelly is actually arrested and taken into custody, uh, and others begin to come forward. What, if any, role do you feel the surviving R. Kelly Dr. Series has played in, in this kind of push for people to come forward? Well, there's no question that uh, the docu-series brought a spotlight to this uh, and has encouraged victims to come forward, and I think that's a very positive thing. I think it has also encouraged prosecutors from around the country to take a closer look at Mr. Kelly and his conduct, as well as that of the enablers. We were, in the, we, we were involved in this case back in April. I only found out about the docu-series many, many months after we were already underway, so it had no impact on what we did. Um, but I thought it was nicely done. How the clients that retained you back in April, how did they come to you? How was that approach as far as wanting to get you involved? They, they called, called me on the phone the same way a lot of uh, clients usually contact me, either by email or by phone. Uh, they'd seen my work in connection with other cases. They'd reached out to us. We decided to get involved. We also did so on a pro bono basis. I want to make that clear. And the reason why we did that is because um, of how important this is. Uh, and what a miscarriage of justice this has been for so long. Uh, and we believed, again, that because of the victims in this case uh, were, uh, are so vulnerable and this had gone on for so long that we would devote a significant amount of time and resources to this effort. And as I stand here today, I'm certainly happy that we did. I'm sorry. Was it one of the victims or was it a parent who reached out? It was a victim initially. The victim so whistleblowers that you're representing, <laughs> have they at any point up to now, or are they currently facing criminal charges Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to answer that. I'm not a liberty This box did not take questions. My phone is ringing every five minutes from those parents in Florida and Georgia. Their daughters may or may not be in Trump Tower. We've had one crummy police well-being check on January 11th in which Mr. Kelly said, turn on your body cams. If we are to believe 25 years of stories using the word brainwashing, those girls may be in trouble right now. Do you know, since Ms. Fox wouldn't take questions, what's being done to see if those girls are okay? Um, I, presently, I, I, I presently represent two of the parents of, 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 of one of the young ladies um, that is believed to be with Mr. Kelly. I have addressed this issue with Ms. Fox. I am more than satisfied with the explanation that I have received from her. I believe that they have taken adequate steps and precautions to ensure those girls' safety in this interim time period. And I'm satisfied by the response that I got from her. Then why am I hearing from the parents who are like in a tizzy right now? Well, I, 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 don't, know which, I don't know which parents you're talking about I'm or what they're... I'm talking about Angelo but, and Alice but, Clary but, and Tim and John Jalen Savage. Uh, again, I'm sad... Again, I'm satisfied with the response that I've received from Ms. Fox, although I can't guarantee the welfare of those young ladies, but um, I'm confident that uh, her and her staff and the Chicago Police Department have taken adequate steps during this interim time period uh, between the announcement of the charges and uh, Mr. Kelly's surrender, which I understand will either be later today or tomorrow morning. Since those parents are on the record, you can say which set of parents you're representing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not willing to make that announcement yet or that disclosure. Next you question. Represent one of the victims who's connected to the charges handed down today, correct? Is that victim cooperating with prosecutors? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, one more time? You represent one of the victims who is connected to the charges that br were brought down today. Correct. Or is that victim cooperating with prosecutors? I'm not willing to disclose that at this point. You mentioned Mr. Kelly's surrender that's mm -hmm. impending here. Um, obviously, he's likely watching some of his coverage. Anything you'd like to say directly to Mr. Kelly should be watching? It is high time that you face justice for the conduct that you have engaged in for the better part of over two decades and don't count on ever getting out of prison. Are all the victims female? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Anything else? Is your client ready to go before a trial jury? Well, I'm, I have multiple clients, and I believe every one of my clients is prepared to testify if necessary before a jury and, and multiple juries uh, around the country if necessary. They are dedicated to ensuring that justice is done in this case. But you just said that the client who is connected to the charges, you just can't say if they're cooperating. When you recovered in the two-year attempting to recover, well, when you recovered, you're still in process of the third. Were those 
being kept as just souvenirs or tokens. Obviously, we had a trial just a decade ago. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not at liberty to disclose where those videos were being kept. I'll take one, uh, one would more you, question. I, I think you referenced this, and please forgive me. The young lady on the videotape that you said makes reference to being 14 years old. Was she one of the three victims that were, or the four victims that were referred to in today's indictment? Yes. That'll be my last question. Thank you.